Welcome once again to Lamp Post, where the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Each week I do my best to answer questions from listeners and viewers just like you from the Bible, the Word of God. Today, this week's question is, could you address unequal yokes as pertaining to both relationships and friendships? Well, I'll certainly try to answer your question here on Lamp Post. Let me begin by saying that the viewer also had a follow-up question as to how this might apply to Christian relationships. So I'll address these questions by looking at the unequal yoke concerning three groups of people. The Bible tells us that there are three different kinds of human beings. First of all, there is the natural man. Now, the natural man is the person who has never come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. They exist only in their natural physical state and have only been born of the flesh. John 3, 6 says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. The second is the carnal man. Now, the carnal man is the person who, though having received Christ as their Savior, Um, is spiritually immature and continues to operate being dominated primarily by the flesh. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. The third person is the spiritual man. The spiritual man is the person who, having trusted Christ as Savior, and having been born of the Spirit of God, submits him or herself to the Spirit of God and grows in wisdom and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and becomes mature spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2.15, Paul says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, we're told to separate ourselves from unclean things, or, in other words, things that are sinful or unholy. I want to look at this separation referring to each of the three groups which I have just mentioned. First of all, the natural man. Again, the natural man is the unsaved man. The Bible refers to those who are natural as heathens, unrighteous, unbelievers, infidels, and the wicked. Now, why would he refer to them like that? because they live by and are controlled by their natural sinful nature. God sees even the very best and noblest of their deeds as unclean. Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the Christian is warned not to have any partnership or intimate relational associations with the natural man because the natural man is not in partnership with nor has intimate association with God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote this, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The idea of the yoke is used. Now, a, a team of oxen were yoked together to plow fields. And we've all seen pictures of this. In the Old Testament, God tells His people, in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 10, Thou shalt not plow with an ox and ass together. Why? Two reasons. One reason is practical. The other reason is spiritual. The practical reason. Because they are two different kinds of animals with two different heights, two different strengths, and different gaits. And these differences would actually work against each other because they could not pull together or keep an even stride. The spiritual reason lies in the fact that the ox was called an a clean animal by God, and the donkey was called an unclean animal. And God uses this as an example of the unbeliever, unclean, and the believer, clean. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. 
So God says that an unclean and a clean working together do not work well. Why? Because the believer is to walk in the spirit and the unbeliever can only walk in the flesh. Galatians 5.17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and they are contrary the one to the other. Therefore, they have different desires, different morals, different philosophies of life, different worldviews, different purposes, different loves and lifestyles, etc., which are not compatible with each other. Also, because of the truth of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 12, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now here it comes, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In our passage, God says that when a believer is yoked up with an unbeliever, it's like righteousness and unrighteousness fellowshipping together. It's like light and darkness in partnership. It's like Christ and the devil being in harmony. Or it's like the temple of God having idols of false gods in it. These things do not work in concert, but are contrary to each other. And so it is when believers get themselves into unequal yokes with unbelievers. Well, just what are these unequal yokes, one may ask? Any arrangement where the believer is in league with or in business with or in contractual partnership with an unbeliever. These relationships would include business relationships, ecclesiastical relationships, marriage, intimate personal relationships, and this would also include close relationships that would cause the believer to be associated with the conduct or philosophies of the unbeliever. It can clearly be seen how such unequal yokes could have detrimental effects on the spiritual Christian and on his or her well-being or his or her personal testimony, not alone the cause of Christ. Let's look at the second, the carnal man. The carnal man is the person who, though having been born again by God's Spirit through faith in Christ the Savior, is spiritually immature and continues to operate being dominated by the flesh. So this would be like trying to plow your field with a Clydesdale and a miniature pony yoked together. They are both horses, but one is bigger and stronger than the other. The pony would slow down the Clydesdale and keep it from utilizing its great strength and power and long gait. The Clydesdale would not be able to perform to its maximum efficiency yoked up to such a small animal. The farmer would be better off to plow with just the Clydesdale alone than to yoke it up with a miniature pony. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 7, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal Christian is still thinking with the carnal mind or the fleshly mind. We are told that as Christians, we're supposed to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, Ephesians 4.23. Romans 12.2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This can only be done by the Spirit of God through the Word of God. Romans 8, 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal Christian's mind is still operating on the old system of the natural man and continues to be conformed to this world and therefore is incapable of proving what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The thinking of the carnal Christian does not lead to life and peace, but to death, the death of spiritual growth, the death of serving, the death of ministry, and the death of God's blessings. The carnal Christian makes excuses for sin and rationalizes and justifies their own carnality and worldliness, sometimes even under the guise of liberty in Christ. But Galatians 5.13 says, Use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. 
Paul spoke of separation from worldly and carnal Christians in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. And if any man obey not the word of this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. 1 Corinthians 5.11 If any man that is called a brother or it be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, with such one know not to eat. And Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us, for an example. Hosea chapter 11 verse 7 says, And my people are bent to backsliding from me. When serious Christians decide to run with the natural or the carnal man, here's what happens. The sinful nature in the natural man and the carnal predisposition of the carnal man will pull on the dedicated Christian and by and by bend him or her to backsliding. And the more time you spend in fellowship and pursuits, the quicker it will happen. Let's look number three at the spiritual man. The spiritual man is the person who having trusted Christ as Savior and having been born of the Spirit of God, submits him or herself to the Lord and grows in the wisdom and knowledge of Christ becoming mature spiritually. 1 Corinthians 14, 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. He or she that is spiritual delights in the word of God and delights to do the will of God. They are saved and serving, serious and separated, dedicated and diligent. The spiritual Christian is one who is filled with the Spirit and exhibits the fruit of the Spirit. Matthew 7, 19. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. As a born-again Christian, you are free to choose with whom you'll establish close personal relationships, associations, and partnerships, even among Christians. As we have established, every Christian is not spiritual. Every Christian is not serious. Every Christian is not separated in his or her own life. The Christian who desires to be a spiritual person will surround themselves with those of like desire. The Old Testament prophet Amos wrote this, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Surely this would include agreement on what direction you're going, what places you're going to stop at along the way, and what activities you'll get involved in as you go. It also would in include what people you hang out with, what testimony you will present, and what message you will bring as you walk together. Years ago, a friend of mine said that a Christian brother who did not believe in eternal security wanted to go soul winning with my friend. And my friend said to him, I can't go soul winning with you. And the man said, well, why not? He said, because I'm going to tell him the good news and then you're going to turn around and tell him the bad news. The kind of Christians that you hang with as your closest companions, your partners and associates, will help determine what kind of Christian you will be. Proverbs 27, 17, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. It is wise to surround yourself with those kind of Christians who will sharpen you spiritually rather than dull your spiritual edge. God called his people in both the Old Testament and the New Testament to be a separated people, separated from sin and separated unto holiness. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16 says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. As ambassadors for Christ, we should be concerned about our testimony. And as ambassadors, we should also reach out with the gospel to the natural man and reach out to the carnal Christians to help them up to higher ground. In 1 Timothy 4.12, the apostle encouraged his young protege, Timothy, with these words. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We should be a witness to the natural man, and we should be an example to the carnal man, and we should be in partnership with the spiritual man. Dear viewer, if you are a natural man, I implore you to be born again of the Spirit of God by trusting the Son of God as your Savior. 
Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, the natural man. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You see, God is a spirit. And to be born of God, you must be born of his spirit. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If you are a born-again Christian, but find yourself more on the carnal side than the spiritual side, I implore you to allow the Lord Jesus to be more perfectly formed in you that the new creature which he has made you to be will be. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. Well, I hope I answered your question. If you have a question you'd like to have answered here on Lamp Post, you can send it to me at Lamp Post, 5542 Perry Highway, Erie, Pennsylvania, 16509 or you can write to me at pastor at graceofcalvary.com. If you've received Christ as your Savior, I'd like to send you out a little booklet that I've written called Spiritual Growth for free. Just write to me, send me your address, I'll get it out to you as soon as I can. Come back again next week for another episode of Lamp Post, where the Word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Until next time, good night and God bless.